This is my book review for The House by Edward Lee. It is an extreme horror novel, and I will admit that I've never really gotten into these before. I kind of like horror. I've always liked dark material, <clears throat> but this is a new one. And apparently Edward Lee is a guy that writes a lot of very messed up books. This is the first one that I've ever read of his. This one was recommended to me by a friend who also shares my preference for dark, messed up stuff. One of our favorite novels is It by Stephen King. One of the things I liked about that was the huge uh, world-building idea that he had, just all the history and stuff. Anytime that a cohesive story is laid out, I love that. Um, the longer, the better. I like that stuff. Even though it takes you forever to get through the book sometimes, especially with that one. And I can't really compare this one to anything by Stephen King because they're just not the same. Different authors, different idea. But I will say the one thing that these two books had in common is the fact that they both kind of created a lore within themselves. And that is something that I really liked. Initially, I didn't know that it was two parts. The first part is about some little creepy kind of guy who grew up on a farm who ends up owing a huge debt to the mob. So what the, these mob guys do is they stick him in this house and they have him make snuff films. Not, well, snuff might be a loose term. It's really starting out as animal porn for the mob. It's the 70s and there's a huge market for underground porn shit like that. Um, again, I didn't know it was two parts, so as the first part ended, the second part began. The second part is about a guy about 30 years later finding himself in that house writing a news article. So, uh, getting into a little bit of the first part, there are a handful of sections of this book that had me gagging. It starts out pretty run-of-the-mill, you know, dog shit. These uh, junkies are in the house, and uh, they're they're used for every video. They're emaciated. They're heroin addicts. They are very unclassy. <laughs> so, um, I, I guess I don't really know where to start. I mean, I guess once it really got strange is when some guy with an erection, not an erection problem, but he has this medical problem where his dick is, I would say, maybe the size of a normal man's arm, and... Uh, they, the mob guys have the cameraman, Leonard Devar, Darava, I can't remember, Leonard Darava, have sex with this dude's penis. Yeah, he had to put his dick inside the dick hole of this huge dick. It, it's, it's just a mess. Where the story really starts to take shape, though, is eventually they, they bring a pig in. And, you know, they have to do stuff with the pig. Part of it involved catching the the pig's jizz in a frying pan and the girl's drinking it. You know, no big deal. A bit later in the story, the pig's still wandering around and he eats the, the junkie's ration of smack for the week and they ended up killing him. And they're so emaciated. Everybody in the house is emaciated. And uh, Leonard, hungry because he's stuck in this house making these porn, porn movies, he uh, ends up butchering the pig and uh, just, you know, eating the meat. No big deal. Kind of makes sense. The weird thing is that this pig came from a compound of these eccentric Christian fucking, this cult, whatever. Well, as it turned out, this pig was actually used in a ritual that brought all the sins of the human race into this one pig where they sacrificed it and whatever crazy religious nonsense shit and uh as leonard eats the flesh of this pig turns out he ends up being a demon he turns into a demon because of the sins and whatever and now he has a new mission in life which is to impregnate a whole bunch of people and bring out the some kind of demon babies i don't know it explains it later in the second part so that brings me to the fact that i didn't realize that the second part actually tied in with the first. I thought it was two completely separate stories. 
which was really cool because the second part also has some very messed up stuff, maybe even more so than the first part because you don't went you don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, this new guy, Melvin, goes up there to or to that same house, which is haunted now, to write some article about haunted houses or some shit. And he ends up being haunted by all the crazy shit that's left behind in this house. And it's really, really cool. It's honestly, as depraved as this book is, it's fucking hilarious. So I'm going to just read a little, uh, little section right now from the second part that had me dying. Uh, so it turns out Melvin is actually this really uh, nerdy kind of virgin guy. And he, he kind of has this thing for a prostitute that he finds. And she owes him a fuck. You know, it happens. And uh, so here's just a little, uh, here's a little excerpt from that part. <clears throat> Melvin's excitement infused him with a woozy, ethereal euphoria. Squirrely shorts were on the floor now. She laid back smudged and nude on the Hummer's big burgundy leather bench seat, opening her legs as nonchalantly as someone opening a newspaper. Truly, her skin was the color of cooked egg whites. One leg draped over the seat back, flip-flop hanging off a skinny foot. Her breasts all but disappeared in this position. The chewed, jerky nipples plucked up like garden slugs sprinkled with salt. As for the nexus of her womanhood, several images might have occurred to Melvin. A woodchuck with an axe mark in the middle. Ground pork in a nest of steel wool. Raw chicken liver squeezed through a hairy armpit. Stacked corned beef. But to Melvin, this catastrophic mess of a vagina was a visual siren song. A beautiful, blooming orchid of love. Squirrely was so skinny that her pubic bone made a tent of the mat of hair. A steeple. Scarier was the suggestion of what existed beneath the hair. An explicit lippy groove of brown-pink meat. Anyone else would be assailed by the, by the most horrendous question of all. How many dirty penises have ventured into this reproductive maw? Hundreds? Thousands? And what volume of semen had been emptied into it? Quartz? Gallons? Yet such ungainly and indecorous notions did not occur to Melvin in the least. He was about to make love for the first time in his life. So, I mean, that's one of the more tame parts of this book, to be honest. It just gets so messed up. But, you know, it's as exploitative as it sounds. It actually is a pretty goddamn cool story. I really enjoyed it. And there was a part towards the end where uh, Melvin, the guy from a minute ago, had a dream. And he kind of sets it up as a movie being played. Kind of reads like a script. And that part actually was fucking scary. Now, don't get me wrong. It's an extreme horror novel for a reason. It's extreme, and it's gross, but it's actually really cool. And if, you can, uh, if you're can, if you looking for something different, I would definitely give this guy a shot. I've heard some of his books are okay, and, but I do definitely plan on reading more of this guy's stuff. It's uh, He's really good. It's funny, as dark as it is, but it's also really good storytelling. I don't care what anybody says. And I'm not some big, huge novel connoisseur. I don't read to learn. I read to be entertained. And, you know, it's kind of a page-turner, too. It's not really a, it's not a long book by any means. It's definitely, you, you can't finish it in one night, but, I mean, a good, solid couple days of reading, you could probably get through it. But, again, I would definitely recommend this if it's your thing. Uh, if you can't stand really gross stuff, don't try. But I love gross stuff because I'm fucked up. So, yes, this has been my first book review. I would give it a definite 8.5 out of 10. So now that that's over, I think I'm going to treat myself to a big bucket full of piss, jizz, and chocolate sauce and drink the whole goddamn thing. Yeah, that happened in the book, too. Nasty, but awesome. <laughs>